a privilege today to have Toby Puddock here. He's not only chef, but best-selling cookbook author, and you're cooking me lunch. Roast chicken. You're going to help. Oh. I thought it was going to be really easy for me. You make it sound me. like you're going to get a chair and <laughs> hang out on the side and read a book. I was hoping that, but of course, I would love to cook along with you in the kitchen. Roast chook. We all love roast chook. We have it on a Sunday night, but also anytime. It's so easy to do, isn't it? Yeah, and this is a, a really Spanish method of cooking chicken is by putting apple and, and lemon in the core mm. or the cavity of the chook. Have you done that before? I haven't done that. I've done the lemon, but um, this is really interesting. Well, let's it, do it, yeah, rather please. than talking. Yeah. Could you pass me a chopper over there? <laughs> sure. Right, I'm going to get you to actually make a flavoured salt. So you've done okay. that before, right? Sure have. And this is a really great tip at home. If you get sort of sage, any woody herbs mm -hmm. like thyme, rosemary, anything like that that's sitting in the bottom of the fridge, yep. you can get that and turn it into a salt. And once you turn it into a salt, it <laughs> yep. keeps forever and you've got mm -hmm. flavoured salt. So mm, in my place, I've got trick. all these little jars of flavoured salts and sugars as well for cooking. So basically what we'll mm. do is start with garlic in here because okay. we want to use garlic with the chicken. So get one clove just one, and a good pinch of salt sure. and then take that right down into a paste. Once you've got a garlic paste happening there, and if you find that you need more salt, just add it in, that's sure. fine. We can use yeah. loads of salt in here. Then we start to incorporate the sage. And once you've got that done, then we can put some lemon zest in there. Okay. While you're doing that, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a basic mirepoix. Right. Onion, carrot, yep. celery. It really is the holy trinity, isn't it? Because it does not only, you, you know, use it for basic stocks, but the sweetness that comes out of carrots, celery, onion is incredible once it's roasted. The sweetness of it, so good. But also, mm -hmm. it lifts whatever you're cooking as well. So exactly. you're getting air flowing underneath, mm. so it's going to cook evenly yeah, too. It protects what you're cooking. How much sage, I should have asked? Just do a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. And it helps to it give out. yourself a head start and just kind of tear it as it goes into there. Yeah, OK. Didn't do that. That's all right, you know, <laughs> we'll still be friends. I, mean, I can just already think about other herbs you could use, and it is true, at the end, sometimes when you buy a whole um, a bunch of rosemary or sage or thyme, it's, there's so much left over and it starts to wilt and go soft, and you naturally you do want to throw it in the bin, but if you can make a salt out of it... Why not? ..and still use it to the best capability, why not? And yeah. as we said, as soon as you put it in salt, you're giving it a whole other life. Another great tip. Do you like the way... Uh, I got you to do all the hard work there. I'm. I know, like <gasps> puffed out. Are you coping? <laughs> I th like I said, I thought I was just going to have a, a no, nice little no. glass of wine in the corner and wait for Toby's it. chook to cook. Onions just go roughly in quarters or eighths, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is you want to have all the vegetables of similar size, so you don't get some burning and then um, emanating that flavour throughout the chook. Love all your tips. Now, Toby, I've been following you for a long time. I love your food. Um, I always associate your cooking with Italian cooking, but you've uh, changed, changed it up a little I've bit. Changed. You're, you've now gone all healthy on us. I haven't gone the full healthy. No, of course not. I've gone a little bit. Of course not. <laughs> no, Shame on not you. No, too healthy. <laughs> what, what happened was uh, uh, 2012, I got out of the restaurant and suddenly I was at home and I was cooking all the time at home and things tasted good. But being in the kitchen for 25 years meant that I was using ingredients that chefs use to make things taste mm. good. Butter, mm. River Cafe, amounts of oil. Lots uh, of cream. Not too much cream. Oh. Actually, do you know, funnily enough, I was uh, cooking what I thought, or most chefs would think is a Mediterranean diet, yeah. but it really wasn't. I mm. found that out a little bit later when I ended up uh, in my wife's personal trainer's office, mm. getting a bit of a chat saying, you're standing in the way of her gaining her ideal body. Nice. Um, so this book down here came about as me making a few minor tweaks to the kind of food we cook at home. And the most important thing to me with this kind of food was that it tasted really good. Yep. It was good to cook, but the most even more important thing was mm. that it made me feel like I, I, I wasn't going without. Yeah, absolutely. Because I don't want to go on a diet and no. eat boring food and look over at the person next to me eating a beautiful plate of ravioli and yep. think I hate them. You know, I want to I want to enjoy cooking and enjoy eating there. So, and I mean, this recipe is a perfect example of eating healthy without that whole healthy stigma to it, where you can't have roast chicken skin and you know salt rub. This is good, hearty, wholesome food. So what we're going to do here is take a bit of apple, 
Let me just move this chook. I can a just imagine bit. the apple steaming um, in the chook's cavity and softening up, almost becoming like uh, apple compote. It's so beautiful, yeah. and you can eat this after. For some reason, I don't often eat it after, but okay, of course you can. Yep. Well, you know, that's your business. <laughs> so let's take this lemon. Let yep. me just move over a little bit. Sorry, can I get you to put a little bit of salt into the apple there? Yep. There it goes. So lemon, apple, a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now is basically seasoning all this because it's going to go into the cavity. Mm -hmm. This saves us seasoning the inside of the cavity and putting our hands in there. Absolutely. If you don't want to do that too much. Yep. I've got this exact pepper shaker at home. It's, it's a goodie, isn't it? I've got a nice new one. Yeah, make sure yours is here. At, and know, the olive oil, oil, usually, like you said, you would put a lot more olive oil, but you're putting a teaspoon in as opposed to a tablespoon. Is that a teaspoon? I reckon that was a teaspoon. Teaspoon-ish. Ish. <laughs> now let's get some of these sage off cuts. Yes. They can go in there with a the mirepoix. Nothing's they've wasted. Got, no, you don't need to. Yep. And then we can pop this into the cavity of the chook. Okay. So we can put as much as comfortably fits. We don't fit. want to go yeah, overboard here. Absolutely. And... It is a small little chooky. It is. Yep. Leftovers. Leftovers. Nothing's we can go wasted into here. again. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Unless or, you want to give it yeah, to Yeah, I never have apple with chicken. I always associate the apple with pork or roast pork. But why not? It's Any roast so with apples, it's going to caramelise, gorgeous. Right, this is where we get a bit surgical here. There we go. On we go. So we'll nestle him in. Okay. And this is where you get into action. Yes. So you want to rub that, really massage it straight in. Before you do that, mm -hmm. I'm just going to give these legs a little slash. And I'm just going to take these guys and fold them, if I can, right under. Perfect. Like and this that. is also about even cooking. So by slashing the legs there, the heat's going to penetrate all the way through yep. the bone, which is great. Yep. All right, so smear all over. Rub it in. And it's not going to burn too much, the, um, well, the, the rub? No. I mean, I mean we've you, got a hard may... herb here, so right. it should be fine. Yep. And we're going to baste a little bit as well, which yep. will soften it as we go and through. And then the natural oils, the chicken fat there, will also protect it from burning. Looks oh. so, so good already. And it smells so good before it's even started to cook. And if you don't want to roast a whole chicken at home, you can always make salt rubs and yeah. rub it straight onto um, chicken Marylands yep. or even a chicken breast with the skin on. And this yep. works really well with barbecue as well. So. Not to forget the bottom of it either. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Get it all in there. In the I couldn't it's, resist. It's quite enjoyable. <laughs> so now we're going to pop this into the oven for 10 minutes mm -hmm. uh, just to get heat into there. And at that stage, we'll put the wine into the tray. Yep. Then it will go into the oven for an, about 40 minutes to roast. Okay. And don't forget to baste. The more you baste, the more moist your bird will be. All right, I'll open the oven for you. So I'm tilting, getting it out of the oven. Juices are running clear, which means it's ready to go. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I almost don't want to do good. anything to that. I don't think we should. I love presenting family, wholesome food in the middle of the table, and you carve when it's rested, of course. Of course, Justine. <laughs> you said that. You very much announced that. I say. am, because I know a lot of people who would just feel that they need to rush now yeah. and they need to carve and eat it immediately, where it's going to hold its residual heat. It yep. needs to just chill for a little bit, doesn't it? I totally agree. But as you said, there's nothing better than putting this in the middle of the table. By that time, it has chilled and it's rested a bit. And then you can scoop out some of those beautiful juices from the bottom there or make a gravy or a sauce oh, of sorts out of that. Stop it. That sounds so good. Well, Toby, while we're waiting for our chicken to rest, I thought it would only be appropriate to have a glass of wine that's going to perfectly match this. Lovely little French drop. How proper of you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. for having me. Thank you.